Okay, we can't go too much closer, just hold on. Let's do this. There we go. And I will put my head out of your way. There we go. The Inkohumas looking a little bit bloodied, a little bit dirty, and covered just in general in buffalo muck. But it's wonderful to see them eating happily away. And you can hear the snarls and the growls. And that's a big buffalo they've caught. That's wonderful news for them. Sorry, a little bit gory for some of you. Perhaps this is your first time watching. This is your first time to see a kill like this. It is the reality of life out here. There's no supermarkets for them to go and get their nice pre-packed meat. They have to catch it themselves. And that can be quite a gruesome business. Oh, let's do a head count quickly. Since it's been so long since we've seen the Inkahumas. I think all five of the lionesses are here. Amber Eyes is definitely here. And I saw another lioness lying up not too far away. And Senzo, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to move. Just to make space for this other vehicle. So, excuse my head, everybody. Hello, Amber. It's alright. We're just going to shift back ever so slightly. There we go. That way we can all fit into the sighting. There we go. So we've got a good view and they can get a good view as well. How's the job and how are you? Good. Hi guys. <laughs> slightly, you're slightly over prepared. <laughs> oh, Yarbin's just teasing us about our roof. Which is fair enough. It hasn't rained at all. See the lionesses growling at each other. There's amber eyes, obviously immediately distinctive by her bright orange eyes. It's so wonderful to catch up with them once again. Look how big you've got! Oh, you disgusting little creature. You filthy dirty. And you've got so big. That is unbelievable. From those tiny little teddy bear, fluffy, adorable creatures that they once were, they now look like little miniature lions. And they're going through that proper gangly phase. Like teenagers that have grown too fast and their bodies haven't quite kept up. And of course, it doesn't help that they are covered in buffalo, which adds a certain raggedy dimension to their demeanor. Here we go. Senzo's first lion kill and his first sighting of the Inkahumas and the cubs, which is awesome. I cannot. Of course I know that it's inevitable that cubs grow. That is what cubs do. Are you surviving there? That is what cubs do. Yet it's still, it's whenever you go away for a while or you don't see them. Look at this cub snarling at the lioness. Oh, you cheeky thing. Dinner time for lions means every man, woman or lion, I suppose it would probably be lioness or lion, for themselves, cubs included. And that means fighting off mum, or one of the lionesses that actually did all of the hard work, then, well, that's just the way it has to be. And cubs, very young cubs, will often get smacked around when they try to feed or they push things too far. Uh, let's just listen to this for a second. Okay, settling down again. Sorry, the sound effects of a lion kill like this are always so awesome that you actually have to stop and listen to them. April, you want to know how old the cubs are? The eldest must be... Sure. What, was it, what would it be now? Eight months old? August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Almost nine months old. Have I got the maths right? Have I got their birth dates right? I must have done. It must be nearly eight, nine months old. And then the youngest must be around seven or so months old. Or just under seven or so months old. For the life of me, I cannot remember their exact birth dates. But that's that's the rough sort of, that's roundabout where they are. And of course, we don't know exactly when they were born. We suspected, and we saw the youngest when they were just a few days old. But we 
don't know their exact birth dates. Mm -hmm. But those of you who perhaps have access to your records, when were these in Kuhuma Cubs born? I think I'm on, I think I'm right. But if you could just confirm for me, and obviously you can do that using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. And you may wonder why, when we've watched cubs grow up, that we don't know their exact ages. It's because we barely know which day of the week it is or which month of the year it is half the time. So keeping track gets a bit tricky when all of your sightings blur into one. I know that they've grown immensely. Look at the claws of that one cub on the buffalo. Stretched out and gripping onto the skin. Shiny white up against its muddy paws. Anisha, yes, it is absolutely true that lions cannot purr. All of the Panthera members of, so the members of the Panthera genus, tigers, leopards, lions. And I actually think, not included in that family, but I actually can think that cougars can purr, if I'm not mistaken. You, those of you who live in those areas, maybe you've seen them, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But I have a feeling that cougars can't purr either. And it's a function of their, for lions at least, their hyoid apparatus, the bones around their larynx, are adapted to be able to stretch right out to allow them to roar. And that changes the shape of things and it doesn't allow the vibration of purring. So technically lions cannot purr. They can, they make sort of almost purring sounds of contentment, but it's not a, not a proper purr. They kind of, it's like a low growl when they're contented and they're rubbing up against each other. But they d definitely do not purr. You can see they're panting very fast at the moment, and that's because the combined effort of taking down a massive buffalo bull like this, and we've seen them hunt live before. We know what it requires from them, and it, is, it requires a huge amount of strength and skill and stamina. These buffalo bulls do not go down without a fight. So they've probably spent most of the evening taking down this gentleman. And unfortunate for him, but for them an absolute necessity. Especially with six growing cubs to feed, who are going to start eating more and more and more. Oh, the amazing thing about lions is that in one go they can usually eat between five, even up to at a real stretch, 10% of their body weight. So for these lions, in answer to Julia's question, for these lionesses, they weigh probably around about 120, 130 kilograms, maybe even a little bit more. So that would mean around about 10 kilograms of meat, between six and 10 kilograms of meat in one sitting. And they will continue to gorge themselves at you too. I'm gonna play a little bit. Oh, he's so gross. So what would that be in pounds? Over, potentially over 20 pounds of meat in one sitting. And remember, they'll gorge themselves, and then they'll go and lie down, and then they'll come back and gorge themselves to more, some more. And as we watch them devour this carcass over the course of the next few days, those bellies are going to look so fat, you'll actually be astounded that they can move at all. It's one of those things that predators are able to do. It's basically stretch out their bellies and properly gorge themselves in a way that we as human beings can't really do, or shouldn't really be able to do, let's put it that way. Hyenas, leopards, lions, they all are fairly capable of that. And what that means is that for the next few days they're actually going to be completely bloated, boiling hot, and very lazy. And that's not their fault, it's because the digestive process releases a huge amount of heat whilst breaking down all of that meat as rapidly as they do so they're constantly feeling overheated. Hello ladies. Long time no see. It's good to see them looking so good. Wait, <laughs> out of my way. So there you go Mira. You wanted to know about why they are panting so heavily. It's a combination quite potentially because this is a relatively fresh kill. This probably happened in the last few hours. So it's a combination of the effort involved with hunting something like this and then gorging themselves and as if you can imagine look at those bellies they're not even fully stuffed yet but you can imagine that the more they fill those bellies the more it presses up remember how I told you they can gorge themselves and press up against their diaphragm so it 
causes that panting and then most importantly it's the release of heat. Oh, this cub's going to get cross. I can't tell if she's licking the cub or a buffalo. It releases a huge amount of heat so they need to pant to cool down. Obviously lions can't sweat. They're also very very prone to overheating. And there's evolutionary reasons for that but essentially they cannot really move about during the heat of the day. Their body temperatures can't rise much more than a degree before they start to really struggle. Look at those claws. Only a few months old and already equipped with some serious weaponry. And you can see them retracting in and out. It's actually the perfect example. <laughs> if I can't eat the buffalo, I'll clean you. No, nope, I'm going to move my paw just in case mom makes a mistake and forgets she's giving me a bath and tries to eat my foot. Well, we're going to sit here for a bit and enjoy the company of the Inca but let's go and find out what James is up to.